Happy day YouTube. Just Jamie here with another update. Um, it's been seven months since I made an update last and a lot of things have occurred. Uh, some really good things and some not so good things. Uh, some ups and some downs and a lot of changes. A lot of changes. So let's get to it. Uh, first and foremost, I am currently unemployed not a great thing. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm back to wearing spectacles. I'm making a spectacle of myself. Thank you very much. Uh, at least now I can see who I'm looking at. And I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing right now. Anyway, um, being unemployed is kind of right now on the heels of something that a lot of trans folk, well heck, a lot of people in general uh, have to deal with. And what I'm coming out of since just after um, my last video, which was way back in October, I am so sorry I haven't kept up on this, um, but what has occurred was kind of I allowed myself to spiral in a mental downward direction. And a lot of things started piling up on me from a mental standpoint until it culminated in a really seriously bad clinical depression. Um, I guess what you could say is that even when you're on the right track, it becomes easy to derail yourself, to become, I don't know what you would say, kind of disenfranchised from the path that you had set for yourself. And what happened was, is I hurt myself way back in October. I tore the MCL of my right knee. And I ended up leaving the, the job that I had gotten that was going to have the good insurance. Uh, the, that was the downside. The upside was, is that my old job that I was still working at currently, they allowed me to go back to full time and everything seemed to be just ducky. Uh, I ended up transferring from the original store that I had uh, begun my transition uh, at. Uh, I mean, when I started at this store, I was a 250-pound goatee wearing flat top sporting man. Hello. And then uh, I started my transition, and they were gracious enough to allow me to keep my job and they they were pretty super uh, for the most part they, they had a couple of rules that I didn't care for but hey according to them I'm the very first person to transition while working for this company and they did not they didn't have a clue as to what to do with me so the long and the short of it is is that I, tr I transitioned while I was there but now I was longing to become more stealth and so I went from, I, I transferred from that one particular store to another branch or, or another store in the chain. And I began working there and only a couple of people knew. And I had gotten, I actually got them all together. We had a little powwow, a little meeting. And I said, don't tell, don't tell. <laughs> and they were, they were like, oh, whatever. Okay, fine. And they didn't. And the difference was, though, this store was like about eight times further away from home uh, than the other one was. And with my knee being hurt, and I started having some car issues uh, at the time, and I had to be driven to work uh, by my roommate, um, they allowed me to transfer to a different store yet again. And at this store, no one knew that I was trans. Nobody knew and uh, not management nobody and it was just like it was the perfect situation it was wonderful but then I started having these issues it was a busier store it was very much a busier place to work at a lot more customers a lot more input and now being the person that I am I give the impression to a lot of people that I'm very gregarious and very outgoing and that, I mean, I'm making YouTube videos, so obviously I'm very approachable, sort of. But I started getting anxious and having anxiety and panic attacks as a result of, uh, of my, you know, just the working and just doing all those things. And I started getting really, really 
you know, kind of sick all the time. And, you know, whether it was mental or physical, I wasn't really sure. Um, but I just, I couldn't do it. And I had a nervous breakdown. I had a complete and utter nervous breakdown. And on the heels of that nervous breakdown, I suffered what was called a complex migraine. And I was hospitalized for a very short time. And it caused me to have stroke-like symptoms. I completely wiped out my short-term memory. Somebody would come up to me and say, hi, how's it going? And I'd say, I'm doing great. And I'd turn my head and I'd come back. Oh, hi, how's it going? So it, kind of embarrassing, kind of weird. Um, and so I couldn't work. And basically, I ended up unemployed at that point. And now I'm getting out there. I'm just coming out of this. I really am just coming out of this. And now, some people ask me, oh, is it your hormones? Do you need to get those, you know, uh, adjusted or whatever? Um, I'm going to be honest with you again. Uh, because of my financial situations, I have actually been off my hormones for a month. I know, does it look like, well, uh, no, I, I don't think I've changed all that much just yet. I mean, I'm still getting, I'm still sporting the girls. Hello. <laughs> um, maybe I, I might edit that out. Anyway, um, but anyway, I, I just think that when people get, when people allow themselves to get in that downward spiral, and they don't, you know, see a way to pull themselves up. You know, I mean, I, I did try very hard to move forward and to keep a positive attitude, but it was really, really hard. And there were a couple of instances where I actually thought of, of doing something very stupid and permanent. I won't say the S word, but yeah, it was... It was not out of the question at the time, but I was very depressed. I was crying all the time. And I mean, I mean, nobody wants to hear about this, but you know, it does happen. And the one thing that got me up and out of the doldrums was that I realized that I was surrounded by a huge group of people who loved me, still love me, and they they wanted to help. And you could see it in their eyes. You could feel it in their words. They were just magnificent. And these people are more than just people to me. And there are hundreds. And they are like my family. I would, uh, you know, I would call them family any day of the week. And it took me the longest time for me to realize that for every moment of despair that I felt, they were giving me an hour of, of positivity. Uh, trying my, trying their very level best to make me feel happy. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, she is uh, just a most wondrous person. She was she was there for me throughout, um, and uh, just a lot of things, just a lot of lot of things that they did for me, and the simple things, and you know just showing me, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to go out? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to just talk? You know, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Oh my gosh. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that from somebody over the last three months, I'd be paying for my surgery right now. I really would. These people are fantastic. I cannot say enough about them. But that comes back to the depression in and of itself. It wasn't chemical. It wasn't physical. It was mental. It was a spiral. I allowed myself to spin and, and, and swirl out of control, you know. Uh, another friend of mine aptly put it, you were caught in a toilet bowl and you didn't figure out a way to hop on the toilet paper. I guess it's a good thing he said that and not hop on a turd. Either way, um, I'm just thinking that things are starting to come out and around. Now, with that said, in relation to my transition, obviously I'm not doing a whole lot. Not a lot more has changed. I've gained some weight. I've I'm getting, I've got glasses, um, I, I'm just, everything is kind of at a standstill, and it's been the same way for months and months and months, but I have a plan, and it's starting with this next week, uh, seeking out and obtaining a job, and I'll let you know what that is as soon as I know what it is, because right now I don't know what it is, um, and, you know, you just got to keep moving forward, you got to be positive, um, and I forgot that. I really did. I had forgotten completely that you need to stay positive, that you need to stay focused. 
you know, don't forget your dreams and don't stop reaching for the stars. You have to keep moving. And if you don't keep moving, <laughs> the rest of the world is just going to run you down. That's all there is to it. It's, it's like you're moving in a great big social crowd. Uh, it's, it's a whole bunch of people. It's like walking down the streets in New York City. It's just a whole bunch of people. And what happens to those folks when somebody falls down? Most of the rest of the folks just simply walk over them. In my case, I had a whole bunch of people who simply reached down, pulled me up, dusted me off, and set me on my way. And now I'm moving forward once again. With that in mind, uh, this particular weekend being uh, June 6th, 7th, and 8th here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, I know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the motherland of gay pride and, and, and the trans revolution or, or something. No, no, it's not. It's the buckle of the Bible Belt, but we're still having a pride event. Um, it's supposed to be one of the largest in the nation. And uh, <laughs> yes, I'm going. Um, and um, I'm going to put... I'm going to put the little flag in my hat. And uh, yeah, I've got a hat too. Um, and uh, yeah, I, um, I left the trans group to pursue a stealth lifestyle. They have seen me exactly one time since I left in March. Uh, so this will be fun. This will be like catch up, learn, learn about new faces and new people, along with um, being able to uh, stand there and go, Ooh, you know, in a rather safe environment. I mean, if you are gay, bi, trans, lesbian, queer, asexual, whatever, go to Pride. Go to Pride. It is the one time of the year where even if you're in the closet, you can be out there and amongst the people and nobody's going to care. So it's a good time. And it's a way to connect it's a way to learn some things about yourself and about everybody else. Because if you don't learn about anybody else, you can't learn about yourself. You need perspective. Because as much as I'd like to think I am the perfect specimen of womanhood, there's always somebody out there who can teach me a thing or two. And when I was depressed, I forgot that too. So let me ask you, the viewers of this YouTube channel, if you have any questions, any comments, anything at all you'd like to ask me to help you in your journey, in your perspective, whether you're transitioning or whether you're just trying to understand somebody that you know, that you want to support who is transitioning, please, by all means, drop those comments and questions right down below. I no longer, I'm, I'm not a social uh, media creature any longer. I don't have a Facebook page um, that people can contact me on that it's just, <laughs> I, it, it got to be crazy. I mean, some of the questions that people were leaving for me on my Facebook page were uh, messaging me with were just insane. No, when I uh, get my final surgery, no, I won't be able to spit children out like a woman. I am a woman, and I won't be able to spit children out. That was the, the funkiest question ever. Um, but anyway, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to uh, cut this down. I'm promising you, my, my loyal, my sick and twisted, beautiful, wonderful people out there who watch my videos, I'm going to make more, and I'm going to make them soon. Uh, as soon as I have something to talk about, and again, not a whole lot has changed in transition. I'm still doing what I need to do. My hair is getting longer. Um, my skin is still soft. I, I got to get back on my HRT, and I'll let you know how that goes. And other than that, not a whole lot, except that I love each and every one of you. It's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until next time, peace.